Hey everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Today's special fashion edition is all about the Emmys red carpet. We have got to talk. This was a really underwhelming red carpet. It was just blah. I am surprised that the Emmys red carpet seemed much worse than the Golden Globes red carpet. I expected to see some truly fabulous, elegant fashions, and it was just not great. This was actually the 2023 Emmys award ceremony. It had been postponed. It was supposed to take place in September 2023, but they pushed it back to January 2024 because of all those strikes that were happening. Let's start with Sookie Waterhouse. She wore this Valentino red maternity dress, and I just am not loving it. It is kind of awkward. The bow is a bit, you know punctuating to the baby bump. I, I'm not sure that's the ideal placement for it. And the whole thing has this very, very low rise sort of structure to it with the skirt starting like an extreme drop waist sort of a situation. And the exposed sides and whatnot are just creating this almost like bib effect to the top. It looks like a bib or an apron. It's just not working in my opinion. I love the color. I do like the skirt portion. That's nice. And I like that they tried. I don't think it's a total disaster. It's just creating an awkward apron status. And the majority of people did not like this look. Only like 14% of people had voted it as a good look. Jasmine Savoy Brown wore Givenchy, and this one found its way onto a handful of best dressed lists, but that's just an indication of what slim pickings the Emmys had. The Emmys red carpet was just kind of a disaster, and this was on a best dressed list for no good reason. It really shouldn't have been, but I guess it was because it was just that much better than all the other disasters. This one, you know, you kind of bounce between the shoes, which don't really flow well for this look. They're a little bit too strappy for this sort of a vibe of the dress and this sort of like doily poking out of the top of her halter top style dress here. It's just awkward. It looks awkward. Something about it is just not working and the way that she posed I think didn't help anything. She should have gone and taken this dress into more of like an ethereal vibe but it seemed like she wanted to keep it more I don't even know the aesthetic she was going for but it wasn't ethereal and so this didn't work. Next, we have Selena Gomez and Oscar de la Renta, and this one was one of the better looks of the evening simply because it was well pulled together, but there were so many problems with it. You can see the seams from forever away. Like, look at those seams. They are so obvious. That should never be happening in a skirt like this. The portion across the midsection, it's almost like they put an extra layer of fabric that did not match properly to make it less sheer. And that doesn't work at all because it's got this like yellowish tint up until like the upper thigh or where her legs begin. And then it changes tone, the under portion, the skin toned portion. It's supposed to be sort of like a naked effect. It just is ruined by the fact that we have this yellow tone and you can see a line of where that stops. That should never happen with a dress like this. I also wish they hadn't shifted to this sort of linear pattern that you can see from the knee down because the way it's flowing across the top and whatnot is fine. And as you can see, they're kind of in more of like curved positions, these leaf pattern here. And then all of a sudden from the knees down, it's just straight. That's a really awkward transition and it would have flowed a lot nicer if they kept the curved flow to it all the way down the skirt portion. I'm not sure why they chose to do that. And then the necklace, while the center pendant matches the dress and the look just fine, the rest of it doesn't really flow as nicely. It would have been more successful if it was all in the brown stones. That would have helped pull it together a little bit better. And I do like her hair and makeup for this. That was a total win. And I like her earrings for it too. It just didn't quite work. And it was pretty polarizing online. I think about half people liked it and half the people hated it. So it just wasn't as successful as it could have been. Now on to more the wave with their giant pins they've been doing. So this was something they had on their runway shows and they're putting celebrities out onto the red carpet with giant violent looking pins and it's just not quite hitting it. I like the quirk to it. I like the idea of it. It's supposed to harken back to the craft, of course, but I really think that's best kept to runway and like photo shoots. I really don't think it translates well onto the red carpet. It looks stabby. It looks a little scary and it just, it's a little tacky, quite frankly. It looks in this particular dress like it's just a bib 
or somebody said a post-it note. It's just kind of this flap hanging off the front. It takes away from her shape. It takes away from her waist. It looks clunky. It looks awkward. Although I do really like the color, I do like the skirt, I like the design overall, and Aubrey Plaza is one who can pull off some interesting or quirky looks really, really well. This one I just don't think is working. So the bib style top and pin really ruined the potential of this beautiful skirt. This was one of the better of a bad bunch of celebrity looks. It's not really a red carpet so much as a silver linoleum, it appears, but regardless, it was one of the better. It still wasn't great though. The problem that the Emmys had was up against something like the Golden Globes or the Oscars, it all looks so tacky and kind of B-team and just underwhelming. This was not a great night for fashion. But let's see what Priscilla Presley and Riley Keough brought. They both wore Chanel and this is a really classic option for Priscilla. I think she looks nice. It's polished. The skirt is hitting her at a good rise. But Riley here, I have mixed feelings about. The skirt the deep v-neck and the bare arms are all in competition. You don't know where to look. You're looking at the skirt because that has pattern and interest, but then you're immediately wanting to look at the v-neck, the shoulders, the arms, because they are exposed, so that's going to always draw the eye. So you, you can't really pick a focal point here. I think it would have been more successful if it had sleeves or just a less extreme v-neck, just to give that skirt the direction that it needed to take charge of the look and be the focal point. At the same time, the skirt kind of looks like boxer shorts under there or something. I think it needed some editing. Louis Vuitton dressed two celebrities. One was successful, one was absolutely not. Iowa Debris had a much more successful look. This is miles and miles better than her mismatched Critics' Choice Awards. If this video is up before that one, then I'll link it for you. Otherwise, come back around and watch that video because it was awful. But this dress, I quite like. It's very, very classic. It has this almost balloon style skirt. It's quite interesting, the silhouette and shape of it. It's a great example of letting that structure and the interesting silhouette be the showcase, be the dominant feature of the dress. Although I do think she needed a little bit louder of a necklace, something a little bit brighter or thicker or chunkier. It also would have been a little bit more on trend that way and a cuff, like a big, thick, chunky bracelet really pull the look together, but otherwise it was perfect and the dress fits her lovely and it's really, really nice and polished. So this was one of the best for the evening and most people liked this dress. I think she had something like a score of like almost 72% loved this look. On the other hand, on the opposite end of the spectrum here, we have Ali Wong who wore a really, really beautiful Dior gown to the Golden Globes and has just fallen. She just tripped and fell flat on her face into a huge pile of craft supplies, it would appear. This is so ridiculous. It looks like two different looks completely and the mesh is not fitting her well enough. The mesh part up here is too big, so it's pulling and having extra room, which is making it look messy and noisy. And then the silvery glittery top is just completely belonging to a different dress than the skirt. They are not the same. They do not go together. I don't know how you can fall so far from such a beautiful dress to this. It's just two dresses smooshed together that shouldn't have been. And literally nobody liked this look. It had the worst scores online. We have Claire Danes in Balmain, and this I absolutely love. This is so beautiful, especially from the front. There's something on the back that I don't particularly love, but the front I am obsessed with. It's just so beautiful. It fits her so perfectly. It's this fresh, beautiful bubblegum pink, which prevents it from being boring despite the front having a very classic silhouette. You do need to stop complaining if something looks boring so to speak, because it's really not. When something flatters someone, it is not boring. It's flattering to them. It's making them look beautiful. It's enhancing their beauty and their figure. It's complimenting them. That is not boring. Just because the dress itself is simple and not covered in pounds of embellishments and, and sculptural elements does not make it boring. Something beautiful and well-fitted is never boring. It's successful. I think if she wanted to freshen this even more or update it or really bring it into a trend moment, she could have done opera gloves in a matching hue. That would have been really beautiful or even something like white mesh would have been pretty. And a collar necklace might have helped it along just a tad to spruce up the front a little bit, make it just a little bit more interest. But otherwise, 
it's fine. I like it the way it is. It's just if she wanted to take it elsewhere, push it into a trend she could have easily with this dress. But I just don't love the chunky sort of shoulder things on the back. I think that a lighter color palette in those would have been much more successful. Something more like white and silver, or white and gold, something just a little bit softer, a little bit lighter that flowed with the dress better. These are just a little jarring, a little heavy. But other than that, this is a total success. We really didn't see much Prada. We really didn't see a lot from some of the biggest, best designers. But we had Bella Ramsey in Prada. And it's just, again, you know, kind of like this masculine suit. For what it is, it is well done. The color options here are quite interesting. It looks like there's some sort of a red, maybe like scarf underneath. I'm not sure what's happening there. A purple shirt and a green suit. So I like the color combo. I think the shoes are fine. I just don't love the center part, but you know, for what it is, it's, it's fine. I do like that she had her hair back this time because at the Critics' Choice Awards, she wore a floral suit with her hair down. It just looked unfinished, unpolished. So this was an improvement there. Nisi Nash in Greta Constantine. The first impression I have of this is that it needs a necklace, like really badly. It needs a necklace right beneath the collarbone here area. It just does. It needs it. Also, it's sitting a little bit too low. Now, I know she's obviously quite busty, but when it's sitting that low, it does give the impression that you're about to explode out of it and that it's too small. That's really all it is. It's not about like, oh, it's not modest enough. It's about when it's that low, it looks like it's too small for you and it makes it look like you're squeezing into something too small and that effect carries through the rest of the dress, which then by accident makes you seem or appear more chubby than you are because if your clothes are too tight, that's what we just automatically think. Like, that's not what's happening here. It's just cut too low on the bust. So when the dresses come up high enough to not give that effect, it makes the whole garment look better and more polished because it looks like it fits you better. Other than that though, I think that this is really flattering to her. The mermaid skirt, although it's not necessarily my favorite, it does balance her bare shoulders, which is really, really good. I'm not particularly convinced of the elbow ruffles on the top of the opera gloves though, because when she would have her arms down, the puffs would be right where her waist starts to come in, so it would actually take away from her well-defined waist there, which would be a downside. That's probably why part of why she posed with her arms kind of up and her elbows out, so that those didn't cloud her waistline and take away from it. Other than that, this look is really beautiful. It's very successful. She looks lovely. Perhaps like a half up or all up would also be really nice and elegant to see an updo here. The designer that dressed the most number of celebrities that evening was Dior, and only one of them was absolutely tragic. One of them was just okay, and the other two were really successful, probably the best of the evening. Let's start with Quinta Brunson in Dior Haute Couture. This is a really pretty silhouette. It looks really, really nice on her. Even the length and volume are flattering to her figure, but personally, I do not love this fabric for photo opportunities. So if you're going to be photographed, going for a fabric that is meant to be wrinkled like this one is, is just not the best option. It's great in person. It looks beautiful and lovely in person because the texture of it is so interesting. But on camera, it just looks like it's overly wrinkled and you didn't try. That's what it looks like on camera. So that's unfortunate. Also, the fact that she didn't do anything with her styling to sort of elevate it or give it a vibe left it looking a little bit underwhelming and a little bit dowdy, quite frankly. A big necklace, a big beautiful, like, attention-grabbing necklace, something with a big pendant or a collar that's kind of a thicker chain sort of a necklace would have been lovely. Some opera gloves would have elevated it and freshened up the look because it is such a simple dress. It needed something to prevent it from slipping into that sort of dowdy, basic sort of a look. It's a beautiful dress otherwise, so it's a real shame. Also, an updo might have been something to really freshen it up and give it some life so that it worked better. So it missed the mark in presentation and styling because it could have had a whole vibe, but it just didn't. Anna Ortega here in Dior Haute Couture. This is a very gorgeous dress. It is probably the most successful dress of the evening or one of them. It is in the top five for sure because it's so beautiful and well done. Now this is a crinoline style dress. So it has that sort of dress cage essentially is what that is under the dress here that is visible. The dress is sheer, but it has this gorgeous lattice work and embroidery on there. There. that is just so fresh and on trend and so beautiful. It is very, very well done. It has lots of interest. The palette is soft though, which helps it appear not too busy and really keeps it looking cohesive. Silhouette and length are well carried as well. 
absolutely love this look overall. It's also well styled. The other successful look from Dior Haute Couture was Elizabeth Debicki, really rich, deep red velvet gown that had nothing to compete with it, which was the perfect approach. It has this beautifully draped, dramatic open back design and a simple front and silhouette. It's just beautiful and classy. But then we had Katherine Hahn who literally shocked me with one of the most tragic looks of the evening. This is one of the biggest fails of the evening. This is horrendous in every way. This gave droopy boobs 1000%. She needed a like supportive black bra, something that echoed the skirt to make this work and perhaps ditch the weird neckline frilly panel that's just frumpy and awful. This look was not successful in any way. It could have been though, because the skirt is cool. I like the skirt, the skirt is fine. I mean, it looks a little bit like a lampshade with the fringe on the bottom, but like I would give it a pass if the top worked. Choosing this sort of nude bralette that just gave no support, no good shape, nothing, just looked so droopy and awful. Uh, even though I wouldn't necessarily have liked the shirt if she had like a black supportive bra, it would have been much more successful, especially something that was like a balconette or something that had this beautiful texture or something. I even have a bra, I have a red one that would have worked really, really nicely here if it were black. It's just, how hard can it be? On to something refreshing. We need a refresher after that horrible, horrible look from Catherine. We have Emma Waddingham in Marquesa. This is amazing. This is another really, really successful look of the evening. It's this cucumber green dress with a dramatic feathered skirt that flatters her figure impeccably. It is perfect styling. There is no competition with the texture. It is just gorgeous, just plain gorgeous. Every bit of this fits her perfectly. Every bit of this flatters her. Notice the pattern that the dress has. It has this sort of curved flow to it that just literally is enhancing her figure. It's flattering her figure even more. And the fact that the feathers come up and sort of disperse in a really gentle manner gives it a perfect flow. It looks lovely in every way. So thank goodness we have a few good ones before these disasters coming up. We have Ellen Pompeo in this just awful and also kind of boring look. I don't love it. She has more narrow hips than her shoulders. She has a little slight inverted V or leaning rectangle sort of a body type. And it's just kind of exaggerating the proportions, which it would have been much nicer to flatter her proportions rather than exaggerate them to offer some balance. The skirt had more volume in it, maybe like an A-line skirt or something rather than this column style, it would have been more successful. But no matter, I still would have hated this top with the bralette underneath, again, offering no support, just not doing anything for her. The stark white collar is also really jarring. The tie is too bulky and chunky. A delicate bow would have been better if you had to wear this dumb shirt. It would have been better with a delicate, like dainty bow, but still, it just doesn't have the flow that it needs. Are you ready for the worst look of the evening? Alex Borstein is here to bring it for you. It is so bad. So, so bad. This is a total disaster. It's awful. I can say nothing good about it because it's just horrible. All of it is. Okay, the color is pretty for her. The color is very pretty for her. That's where this ends. What is happening? Why is it happening? This is just awful. Nothing works. They, she's got these like, it's like a boa, a black and red boa over the shoulders like she's wearing a backpack. And then she's wearing like what looks like lingerie with just this weird strappy thing hanging on top. It's bad. It's really bad. So let's move on to something a little bit better. We have Sarah Snook wearing Vivian Westwood. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous red gown. I like the styling. I like the chunky necklace here. I like the earrings. The hairstyle is fine. An updo might have been a little bit more like giving it a little bit more pep to its step, but this is fine. I love the dress in every single way. It flatters her body type. It gives her more of a waistline here, the way that it's laying. Let the only thing I will say is that I hate the location of these straps. It's making it look like too wide for her shoulders, like they're falling down, but at the same time too tight. So they're just a little awkward. I feel like the skirt and the bodice are impeccable. Sleeves would have reduced the awkward visual that the straps are giving. If it just went into sleeves, it would have been okay. But regardless, they should just be up because this is not looking intentional. It looks like they're kind of falling down and not fitting well. Like there was too much length to the straps. So she thought, well, I'll just pull them off to the side a little bit and it'll work. No, just have the straps shortened. If the straps were straight, it would have been a thousand times better. 
Another absolutely fabulous and successful look from the Emmys that evening was Jessica Chastain in Gucci. She wears Gucci a lot and she is a great fit for the brand. She has a great body type to dress and she usually pulls off their looks really, really well. And this is no different. This one's really beautiful. And the color might not be everyone's taste. It is like neon green. It's loud. It's intense. It reminds me of Nickelodeon slime. But Gucci is going into the greens this year. They are leaning into those beautiful greens. Remember Taylor Swift's dress at the Golden Globes? They are going after this bright green this year. And she pulls it off. It's not an easy color to pull off. She looks great. This is beautiful. Her styling is perfect. Her sleek, simple hairstyle echoes the same features of the gown. It is impeccably well done. Katherine Heigl in Reem Accra is pretty nice. You know, I don't love the petal design on the boobs. It just looks a little clunky. Not my favorite. I think it would have been more successful with just a regular sweetheart and then go into some sort of petal pattern or or feature, but I do like the way it gathers off to the side with that little brooch detail as a button of sorts and the train. The color is also beautiful on her, so it's quite flattering, just not perfect. Next, we have Issa Rae and Pamela Rowland, and this has drama. It is beautiful, but I don't love the beige, nor this style of dress like in general. It just feels a little bit too old for her. It just feels maybe a little dated or a little bit mature for Issa Rae. Emily Hampshire wearing a terrible CH by Carolina Herrera dress. No, this looks ill-fitting in every way. It looks like it has too much room in the waistline, too much room in the hip, and the shoulder situation is not working. The center part and hairstyle is awful, absolutely awful. This is just not a flattering neckline for her. It's a disappointing look overall. I feel bad for Emily Hampshire. But Dominique Fishback brought us a beautiful Cinderella-esque look here in this gorgeous gown. It is so pretty. It has a very nice silhouette for her. The waistline hits her at a great spot. I do think that opera gloves would have really freshened this up and made it look more on trend, which would have been nice to just elevate the look a little bit. And the neckline isn't necessarily my favorite, but I don't hate it either. Overall, this is a beautiful dress by Miu Miu, and she looks lovely. Rhea Seahorn is wearing that fresh, crisp lime green that we're seeing a lot of, especially from Gucci, which is not the designer for this dress. I'm not sure who designed this one, but it is really pretty. The only thing I will say is that she should have skipped the shoulder pads because it's making her look a little too wide up here in comparison to her hips. She has a pretty good balance without those shoulder pads, so taking those out would have been nice because she also looks like she's lifting her shoulders a little bit in some of the pictures. That's just the shoulder pads. They were a bit too much. Otherwise, I think the dress is really nice. It's got interest, but it's all the same color palette so it's not overwhelming or too busy. Next we have two dresses from Armani Privé. We have Beatrice Garano and I don't love this one. This one is pretty shapeless, kind of awful. What is this awkward tab sticking up and the roses are just kind of creating a weird boob proportion. It's making it look like she has no boobs and I'm not loving it. I do like the skirt portion and I think that the netting over the top of the glittering skirt is actually really well done. It's just a matter of this tab and ruining her boobs. Why? Why ruin someone's boobs? It's not nice. It's rude. Megan Faye had a much more successful look from this designer and it was one of the better dresses of the whole entire evening. Again, it needs a necklace though. We need something to pull this look together and give a little bit more of a focal point up here. Some opera gloves also would have elevated this look really nicely. Overall, I quite like it, even though the roses might appear a little bit crafty, a little bit kind of tacked on, but I think that if they evolved into smaller ones, it would have been more successful. You know, if it kind of would have dissipated down her bust area, that would have maybe elevated it. But at the same time, I think that this is very successful in general and it looks beautiful. The fabric is amazing. Zuri Hall, I have no idea who designed this, but it was really pretty, well done, fits her great, good silhouette for her. Had to mention it. Dolce Gabbana. I have Anna Osceola here in this really nice, beautiful dress. A great silhouette for her. It's very classic, but the green is so fresh, it really keeps it looking modern despite it being a sort of classic silhouette. But we also have Samantha Hanrady in this dress here, which I really want to love. But it's just not quite perfect, but I mean, it almost is. It's one of the better looks of the evening. I think that this folded neckline is taking away from the effect. I think it would have been so much more beautiful if this lace would have just come up and been the top of the dress. Just come all the way across and be the top of the dress. Don't put this flap because it's kind of puckering away like it's not as well fitted or something. It's just not quite flowing as nicely as say like a sweetheart would have. But the skirt portion, I 
absolutely love. I even love the waistline of this. It's a gorgeous dress and it looks beautiful. Lizzie Kaplan is wearing Yoji Yamamoto and this is quite flattering, quite pretty. It's a good choice having your hair up. It would have benefited from a necklace again, just like a nice tight collar necklace here. And it does look to be hanging just a tad bit low, but overall I think this one was really successful and really beautiful despite being a little bit more muted of a look. One of the more polarizing dresses of the evening was worn by Alfie Fuller. Half the people loved it, half the people hated it. I am not loving it. I think the proportions are a little bit thrown off by this really low drop waist here. It might be a bit too low to flatter her body type the best, as well the skirt a little too voluminous. It's just not quite working. It's a little bit tacky with the bows in her hair. I think if she would have styled it differently, like a really glamorous collar necklace, some opera gloves, an updo, it would have elevated elevated it, it would have made it look a little bit more elegant than tacky. Cody Heller also tried a Barbie pink style dress here. I absolutely hate the shoes. If the platform is more narrow than the shoe, it just looks way too awkward and in danger of ruining your ankles. I think she needed a necklace here. It's maybe not the right color for this silhouette of dress. Rachel Brosnahan brought us one of the best looks of the evening wearing Versace here. I do like it. Despite it having a lot going on, I think it's working perfectly because it's pretty much all one color palette despite these grommets here and there adding a little bit of interest. It's a great fit. It balances her figure beautifully. I don't love the hairstyle. I think she could have tried harder with the hair. The rest of it is perfection. Cheryl Lee Ralph also in an absolutely stunning look. This is gorgeous, from the front at least. I haven't seen the back, but I the only thing I don't like is the spiky lapel. Otherwise, this is gorgeous. It's so flattering for her figure. The double-breasted blazer-inspired top is fresh, and it makes this look completely successful overall. Okay, Reese Feldman in Saint Laurent. Absolutely hate it in every single way. This is awful. It's gross. I don't like it. Sophie Thatcher, this color, just not it. It's not working. She needed a better undergarment as well because anytime the belly button is catching your eye when it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to be covered, then that's unfortunate. It's going to ruin the look. It's going to make a focal point out of your belly button. What's it doing there? All you're going to stare at is the belly button. Concentric circles right there. Put on a smoothing undergarment. Put on a slip. Fix that. Don't have that ruin your look. It shouldn't be a feature. Belly button in a dress like this, definite fail. I think a different color would have been much more successful. This color is just very hard to wear. Christina Ritchie had the most successful look from Saint Laurent, although it's still not perfect. I do love the necklace taking control of the eye and telling you exactly where the focal point should be. That was really, really smart to let this low, squared off v-neck be the feature. Her body type, though, benefits from a little bit more volume in the hip or less visual weight to the shoulders, however. So for her body type, it wasn't a perfect match, despite it being a beautiful dress, well done and well styled. Carrie Russell in Alexander Vautier Couture. Keeping it in an all black look does help this dramatic silhouette to be pulled off and not be too overwhelming, but I just am not obsessed. Something about it looks like a blob sewn to the back of her dress. I'm not sure if it would have been more successful if the front was a different color to give a little contrast. I don't think it would. It's just... It's not coming across as this billowing cape or train that I think they were going for. It's coming across like a blob trying to eat her dress. It's not working. Simona Tabasco in Marnie. I like this, but I don't love it. It reminds me a little bit of paper collage with these white borders. I think the progression, though, from small pattern to big was really successful. I think the silhouette is really successful, and I love how she styled it. It's one of the better looks of the evening. It's just not my absolute favorite. But you know who had the biggest fail? Maria Bello. Okay, someone get this woman some help. A stylist. Something. Someone. Do something. This is the second time I've seen her in the period of one week wearing something utterly tragic and awful. The black shoes and clutch don't work for this at all. Get them out of here. The skirt I actually like. I quite like the skirt. It's really pretty, but it needed a simple crop top or a simple bolero, something really simple to allow the skirt to be the focal point. Instead, she wore this horrible, overwhelming top that's got way too much going on and doesn't match the skirt at all. The two just don't vibe. There's too much happening and they don't get along. They're competing. 
this is a problem. What's happening? Amy Poehler looked really, really nice. Um, this is a really basic, obviously plain dress, but it's beautiful. It's beautifully done. It looks good on her. It's flattering to her. She also doesn't have like the most well-defined waist. So allowing the focal point to be the slit is really genius. Natasha Lyonne, however, absolutely hate this silver look. I hate pointy boobs a la Madonna. I just do not like the pointy boob look. And this has that, so it's disqualified from being good, in my opinion. Tracy Ellis Ross in Sport Max. The top is a bit too long for her. It's creating less than flattering proportions. It's a bit of a miss. I do like her hair and makeup, though. This is just kind of widening and awkward. It's not flowing nicely. It's making her look much bigger than she is. It's unfortunate. Ariana DeBose could have had such a successful look. She could have but she ruined it again. The skirt, I really like. The hair and makeup, really, really good. She looks very pretty. I don't love the blazer as a cape situation, and I really don't like these bralette tops, especially if they're just kind of giving a cheap bralette vibe like this one is. They're not the most flattering thing. They don't offer any support. They don't give you any shape. It's ruined and otherwise high potential look. And this is Brunello Cuccinelli. Overall, I would give the Emmys a C plus. It was just not that great. There wasn't very many wow dresses. There wasn't very many dresses that I was like, ooh, this is a beautiful, spectacular look. It's so gorgeous and polished and well pulled together and amazing. There really was hardly any of that. Obviously, some of the winners of the evening include Rachel Brosnahan, Claire Danes. The absolute best were thanks to Dior. What would we do without them? Jenna Ortega and Elizabeth Debicki in some of the most successful looks of the evening. Absolute worst, besides Alex Borstein, which I don't even know if that should count because it's like, were you trolling? What were you doing in that? Um, Catherine Hahn, this awful thing. Em Ellen Pompeo trying to do the same thing. Awful, just awful. Maria Bello, tragic. Ali Wong's mismatched Valentino. So it was a night of underwhelming fashion. Hopefully, 2024 Emmys is much better. But the Emmys were not anywhere near as bad as the Critics' Choice Awards. That was truly, truly disappointing and awful. And we're taking a look at that next. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Please leave it in the comments your best and worst looks from this video, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Have a happy day, everybody. Bye!